on um, structuring effective sentences. And it isn't necessarily based on a level per se, it is throughout the whole of the functional skills um, as a whole. So welcome to your uh, virtual classroom session on structuring effective sentences. So can you just in the chat and I know Paul and Sam will keep their eye out and um, will you just tell me how you feel about about writing a mixture of sentences, including both simple and complex sentences. So if you're not confident, if you're 50% and you think you know, but you're not too sure, and or if you you know you're confident and you're 100% just here for a bit of revision. Got some people writing up now. Perfect. Oh, a couple of people joining as well. Super. So have we got anything? Yeah, a couple of just above average kind of ones. OK, some of you halfway, below oh, halfway. Nice. <laughs> Super, fantastic. Yeah, a bit of a mix. Yeah, perfect. OK, then, so your learning objectives for today are um, I'll be going through how to write both simple and complex sentences and obviously understanding the importance of using a mixture of verbs, adjectives and nouns um, using your punctuation correctly because you could be using it, but not in the correct context um, and the importance of using connectives in the sentence as well. So your starter activity. So I don't mind if you want to um, unmute yourself on this one or if you want to type in the chat uh, and I know Paul's having a look at it as well. Um, so the first star activity it is just rearranging jumbled sentences. However, what it, one of the words in this sentence that was put up now you don't need one of the words, so you will use all of the words bar one. So can you, I'll give you a couple of minutes, have a look and see if you can rearrange that sentence to read correct for me. Paul, Sam and Sophie, I'm more than happy for you guys to step in on this starter activity as well. So writing system, telephone, am to I about banking your and complain. So well, a, few, a few people, it says typing, so they're quite long sentences, aren't they? So. Yeah, perfect. So one word in there is a word you don't require. Have we got anything? Uh, we've got one person who suggested the missing word, but I won't say it until some more have done it. And then a couple of people who <laughs> says they're typing, so. Okie dokie. So give it a few more seconds. So we've got a couple of ands, a couple of writings, uh, and somebody's got a full sentence. I am writing to complain about your telephone banking system. Uh, okay. A couple of other people suggesting the missing word is and. OK, perfect. So let's have a look. So the correct answer is I am writing to complain about your telephone banking system. And you were correct. The extra word is and. So I've just got one more for you. So I tried four details this week to system access feel to account my times have use the i nearly felt as if i was saying the sentence then <laughs> <laughs> so again i'll give you a couple of minutes Do we have anything? Any suggestions? There's one suggestion of feel and there's a few people typing. OK, perfect, thank you.
Anything come through? Uh, no, it's still waiting. And um, you've gone a bit quiet there as well, Eamon. Can't hear you as well. Can you hear me now? Try again. Is that better? Yeah, that sounds better to me. Uh, yeah, a couple more suggestions of feel. Feel seems to be the one that people are going for. Okay, nobody's got a sentence, no? Uh, not a full sentence, no. Okie dokie. So, the correct answer of the sentence is, I have tried four times this week to use the system to access my account details. And you're correct, feel was the um, the word that didn't, they didn't require within um, the sentence. So, moving on from our activity, what do you think makes an effective sentence? And at this point, I just need to come out of it and make any notes. So, anyone, what do you think uh, makes an effective sentence? So I'm just going to stop sharing one second. And I'm just going to share the PowerPoint. So, is the PowerPoint back up there? Yeah, we've got that on the screen. Someone's put bold writing. Fantastic. Super. So, I'll just put that in bold writing. Anything else that makes an effective sentence? So, what can we use within the sentence for it to read well, to stand out? Uh, direct and to the point. Nice, I like that. Direct and to the point. Steve, uh, Hazel's got instructions. Perfect. Oh, instructions. Anything else? Nigel's typing. Mm, yeah, Nigel's typing. Yeah. yeah. Oh, and it's gone. <laughs> Anything else that you think that makes a, an effective sentence that it, it reads out to you, you know, when your reader's reading it, it reads really well. Uh, starting with a question, fantastic. Would that be an open question or would you, would you use a rhetorical one? Uh, and punctuation, perfect. With the question one, I'm just going to put um, underneath rhetorical. And the reason for it is I'll go through it as we're doing the delivery of the session. Um, so I can come back to that one. Fantastic, you got some good ideas there. Thank you. OK, so uh, I'm echoing. Uh, so creating impact on the reader. What I have done is I have gone back to um, Sam's PowerPoint from earlier on today. Um, and the only reason why I'm touching on it is a quick recap. Sam's obviously gone through it. We've got it uh, recorded. So if, if you did miss the session, we can go back to it. Um, things that create an impact within a sentence for a reader is obviously using a verb. And we all know a verb is describing an action. So you're doing or being the subject, uh, someone or something performing the action. Uh, which is obviously the verb, and then the noun. So it's the name of the person, place or thing. So for example, the object that's involved within the action. So underneath, we've got a um, an example. And in, in the in where, where you're typing your answers in, if you can just think of what the verb, subject and noun is as I'm reading it out. So Jazz is studying her functional skills, English level two from home using her laptop. So what do you think the verb subject and noun is within that little example. Anyone? Jazz is the noun, okay. So what do we then think is the subject and the verb if we've got jazz as the noun? Studying is the verb. Brilliant. Fantastic. And then the subject. You're unable to see the question. So I'm just reading the question out um, to somebody that just said it in the in the chat box. So Jazz is studying her functional skills, English level two from home using her laptop. 
within that context, what's the verb, what's the subject and what's the noun? Can you see the PowerPoint on your screen? Yeah, it's still showing on my screen, yeah. Yeah, still see it. OK, so Tracy says English level two. What, what's that for, Tracy? The subject. Perfect. OK, so let me just pop the answers back in. So the verb is studying because that is what she's doing. The subject is jazz because uh, that's the name of the person. And then the uh, the noun is the laptop, the the these the action involved so obviously that is what she's using to 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 study at home so moving on to the next slide uh i might have to just put this on a slide so how to improve sentence structure so to to impact the reader when you're writing so whether it's level one or whether it's level two always know that you want whoever's reading it to to create a, a scene, an image in their head of whatever you're delivering. So whatever you are writing, they need to be able to imagine it and think, oh, OK, this is a really good piece of writing. So nothing ruins a good piece of writing when you use weak words and poorly structured sentences. So if you have got, you know, you're using short sentences repeatedly or they're very long and there's no pause and, you know, there's no there's nothing to join your sentences, there's no adjectives, verbs, nouns. The reader is automatically going to switch off and think, mm, I'm not interested. Um, so always make sure you have got, you know, you've got a good balance of the structure of good sentences. So short, long, using your punctuation. And again, as I'm delivering the session, you, you'll understand it a bit better with, with what I mean by um, using a mixture. So when we talk about sentence structure, we're discussing the elements of a sentence and how these elements are organised on the on the page so in your writing and what message is conveyed to the reader. So what effect is actually having on the reader? So I picked a few points that I think is quite important in your written um, in, in your written tasks. Um, so building your vocabulary, I have, you know, with my my own learners, I'm constantly saying this to them. So nothing makes a sentence sing like words are precise and vivid to the point um expand your own vocabulary build it buy yourself a little um a little book from b&m or i don't know home bargains and in there you can always add a word that you may not use all the time but you know you do like using it in your writing and start to build your own little dictionary uh keep it on the side of you when you when you're writing your work so that then automatically will support you with your your sentence structure so you're using words that you may not necessarily use all the time but academically it'll improve your writing and it will bring that effectiveness out straight away and you think oh wow this sentence reads so well so rather than having a basic sentence you can still have a sentence with limited words but words that probably read a lot better than something a bit basic. So with that, you can always sign up for um, a word of the day newsletters and they're everywhere on Google. If you signed them up, signed up for them and you'd, you'd get different ones coming through every day. And again, add it to your own dictionary. Keep a log going back to your own little, um, your own little dictionaries. Log everything, everything you do, always put it on the side. You may not need it all the time, but you might want to start to use it. And that way it will improve, your, you know, your own writing skills. I still do it as a tutor as well. Um, and sometimes I look when I'm writing an email or a letter, I go back to my own dictionary and think, oh, what word can I use here? Um, and, and again, it's always making yourself that better person that, you know, be able to, to um, that would be able to write better. Um, also, one, one thing I have always learned is try and master your language through reading or going through poetry or even exercises linked to poetry. So again, if you go on Google and you type them in, there's, there's such a wide variety out there and, you know, they're all free. You don't need to pay for them. And that starts to build your academic writing as well. So you may not need it for functional skills, but if you are looking to go above and past functional skills because you've got other courses to go on to, you want to go to university, start to look at poetry exercises and it will start building your academic writing, which will be brilliant for your functional skills. But again, it's one step ahead if you go in to, you know, go on to another qualification as well. Avoid repetition. Now, this one 
is a language technique. So we do use repetition as a technique. However, not this type of repetition. So the language technique we use would could be an example of something like uh, such and such person said no, no, no. So that's your technique. However, try and avoid writing something over and over again. So the example I've put in is she had a pretty smile. She wore a pretty dress. She lived in a pretty house. You're using the same adjective over and over again. It, the reader gets bored. Why you, Why change it around? Why are you using the same thing over and over? So this kind of repetition robs the story from its imagery and it makes it flat, two-dimensional, di two change it up a bit. So maybe something like she had a pretty smile, the dress she wore was very flattering, the house she lived in was one of those castles from a fairy tale. Always remember you're writing, nobody is going to um, know whether it's the truth, if it's real, if it's you know linked to yourself. They just want to see the style and the effect that you're going to have on the reader. So mix it up a bit. The next one down, mixture of sentences, uh, run on sentences. I'm not sure if you know what they are, but I have put it in brackets. Um, sentences that require a connective or to be broken down with punctuation. So if there are um, two sentences that you can merge together, that's obviously when we use a connective and I'll talk about that in the next few slides. Um, if you want to break it down with punctuation, you can always add a comma, a full stop. And again, I'll, I'll move on to the, the punctuation in the next slide as well. Um, so run on sentences and short sentences strung together with commas and connectors create a lot of dust and noise in a piece of writing. In most cases, simple, straightforward language helps bring the action of the story to centre stage. So when you are using a mixture, if you want to have something simple but effective, so, you know, the, the dog barked really loud. That's a simple sentence. And then your next sentence can lead in from that sentence. However, that's when you start putting in your adjectives and your verbs and your nouns and you make it, you know, you make that story come to life. You make that writing for the reader think, oh, wow, this is incredible. And then the final one is always pay attention to the word choice. So don't necessarily think, you know, why refer to something as a loud noise? Simple, basic. Yes, you're putting the message across. Can you say it in a different way? You can rearrange the words, raw, a din, a commotion, something again that you're putting more emphasis on. Your, your sentence structure is improving. So you've gone from a basic word from loud um, to raw and, and it has more of an impact. Uh, the more specific you are in your writing, the more easily the reader will be able to visualise whatever you're communicating. Choose words that are as precise, accurate and as detailed as possible. So maybe if you do start in your own little dictionaries, have something basic, have words that can replace that as well. So use something like a synonym log. So something here again, as an example, which is um, loud and you've got a raw next to it. So when you, when you go in to write something, you've already got a different word that replaces the basic word. And again, it emphasizes the what, what the reader is looking for. Is that OK? Does, does that make sense? Has anyone got any questions? Are we OK? Yes, no, all good, perfect, thank you. Okay, so the next one, um, a simple sentence. So me and my friend studied functional skills English, we enjoyed it. Two simple sentences put next to each other. So joining these sentences together, we take out the, uh, the full stop and we add a connective word. So me and my friend studied functional skills English and we enjoyed it. So the word and is where your connective comes in. So you're joining two sentences together and you put that's when your mixture of short and complex sentences start to come in. So the job of the connective is obviously to join the sentences um, and it creates that effectiveness the reader is looking for. So they're looking for short sentences, long sentences. They're looking for, you know, you're taking out that comma to replace it with a, a word that merges sentences together. But always remember the sentences that you merge together need to have the similar subject in it. So you can't merge two sentences that are completely different to what you're trying, the message you're trying to co convey. So just bear that in mind as you know, when you when you do go and connect sentences. So moving on to punctuation, um, so to create an impact, obviously you need to have punctuation within your writing. 
a capital letter at the beginning, which you know most of you and all of you should know. Um, a full stop, question mark, explanation mark at the end, which creates, you know, it starts building on just having a full stop. Put a question mark in. Add that rhetorical question. St uh, st open your open your paragraphs with a rhetorical question. The reader will automatically think, oh, actually, this is quite engaging. Um, using speech marks for certain words, crash, bang. Again, it's that structure in the sentence. It creates impact and that's what we're looking for and then using commas to break down long sentences and again joining joining connectives um within that sentence to create one sentence rather than two or three simple sentences so in a quick example bob walked to the cor local corner shop full stop he brought some pears we remove the full stop and we add an and we've come we've converted that into a mixture sentence a complex one so can any of you now give me an example of connectives? So just some quick ones in the chat box. If you can think of anything that you can use to merge sentences together. We've got some typing. Because fantastic, therefore brilliant. Yeah. Although fantastic. So you, you understand the, the use of connectors, which is fantastic. I think I've just got one more. However, it's brilliant. I love however. It's a really good one. But yeah, perfect. But but just remember when you're using the word bit, the subject may not be the same. So you might be saying something, Bob went to the shop, but this happened. So then that automatically changes the context of the sentence. However, you can still use it. That's not a problem. You can still use but. Whereas, fantastic, yep, yeah, if it merges that sentence together and it makes sense when you're reading it, perfect. Brilliant. So what I've done is, I'm just going to share that again. So I've got a list of connectives. Um, towards the end of the session, what we'll do um, when we send out the recorded sessions, we will send them out as a handout as well. So you can, again, keep them by the side of you, put them in your own little dictionaries. You've got different words. So if you think you're repeatedly using, I don't know, although all the time or however, Replace it with something else, but always remember when you replaced it, read that sentence over and over again so it makes sense when you're writing. The last thing you want to do is add a connective in a sentence that you think, oh, actually, Eamon's delivered this, our tutors have said this, it makes sense. But when the reader reads it, they're thinking, no, that doesn't make sense. So why has she used this connective instead of using but or and something simple? So don't overcomplicate it. One I wanted to talk about was Bloom's taxonomy. So I use this again in my own day to day practice in my own current job. Um, I think it's such a good way to broaden your personal vocabulary. So if like you've got owls on the on the right hand side and you've got different words, you're creating, evaluating, analyzing, remembering, understanding and applying. And then there's different off the branches. There's different words to um, to to replace them words. So again, when you're writing, keep a copy of this next to you. I've got a few mats that I always put on the side of me. So when I am writing a piece of text and I need it to flow nice, I do use this, this little mat that, that I keep next to me. And I love things with colours and visualising things. Now, again, when you are using words from this mat, don't overuse them. So use them here and there and replace certain words because you think, oh, actually, you fabricate is, you know, it sounds like a good word to put into this sentence. And when it reads right, you'll start to know how many words you can actually replace and how many basic words you can have as well, because that's where your structurising and your effectiveness comes in. So don't over overword it with all these fancy words because the reader's going to get thrown back and think, oh my God, what is this? You want to use enough words where you think your reading is starting to read academically. So not just at the functional skills level two level, you're going above as well. So you, you're writing at the sense where you're thinking, actually, it will work in my professional career. It can work in my academic writing post um, functional skills. So if you're going to university or if you're doing another course, you're starting to build that for your personal um, vocab as well. So it's not just sitting at functional skills, it's starting to broaden your horizons in every angle. So always try and use um, Bloom's taxonomy um, when you do write your word, because it, it will automatically, you'll just, rather than looking at the map, you'll already know them words because you, you're looking at them every so often. Do we have any questions on that one? Are we okay? Oh, Hazel, she loves this. <laughs> Brilliant. 
I love using balloons as well. I did it a few years ago at university and whatever I've learned, I try and I push that onto my learners as well. So anything that works for me, everybody isn't the same. You know, you, you've got different learners. I try and deliver what I can. So, you know, anything that I can share, I'll obviously pass it on to Sam and uh, Paul and they can relay it with yourselves as well. Fantastic. So just coming towards the end of the session, um, you should obviously session outcomes. You should now know how to create a simple and complex sentence and why it has an impact on the reader. So having a good understanding of the use of verbs, adjectives and nouns, as well as using punctuation in the correct place. So don't just stick a comma in because you think you need to breathe there. Have the comma in the correct place. And if you're unsure, come back to your tutors and say, actually, we're unsure about where this punctuation goes. Can you help us out? Um, and again, that will start helping you structurise your work correctly. Um, you should be able to join two sentences. So using the word con connectives, um, always think, you know, you'll have the handout that we'll send out afterwards with the Bloom's Taxonomy, which should support your, um, your writing develop massively.